Well, our guest in this segment is Dr. Suzanne Salix. I hope I got that right. And we've got John Jones, who is the president of Brighter Futures. Welcome to both of you. Thank you very Thank much you, for sir. having us. Was I close? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> all right. First of all, what is Brighter Futures? Um, we started as a literacy program. It was original intentions to be about a three-hour program a week. Um, our, our Wagner Public Schools have gone to a four-day school, like a lot of other school systems have, for economic reasons. And we just saw the kids not having anything positive to engage in. Uh, a lot of our kids were falling behind in their reading and writing skills. So we went to one of our apartment complexes, uh, Autumn Woods, which is a Section 8 apartment. And Dr. Suzanne Salix had had a lot of uh, a prior experience in Miami, Florida with working with those programs. We discovered the other needs that that were there as far as uh, 90 plus percent of our students are on food subsidies and so they weren't getting adequate nutrition when they're not in that pro, uh, school that day either. So it started growing from there um, and we had uh, uh, we wanted to also a fitness component to go along with this and fortunately we have a wonderful superintendent and school board and a abandoned old school that was in our neighborhood and so things lined up pretty quickly and uh, with about 2,000 hours of community service and uh, elbow grease and mm -hmm. a lot of heart and a lot of uh, uh, community-wide participation, we've been able to get into that abandoned school. It has four classrooms, a beautiful old gym. And on Mondays from 8.45 to 5.15, we've been able to serve 45 to 50 plus kids on average every Monday. Boy, that begs a number of questions. That, don't take this as an insult. Right. I think it's a marvelous beginning, but 40 to 50 kids barely makes a dent. Right. Well, if I may, we think sure. it makes an incredible dent because we Out know it starts with one. Mm -hmm. That's what we truly believe, right. that it does start with one. Um, but it's beyond the children. It's their family members, and it's the other community that's getting involved in what we're doing there. We know education is, is, is so important, it's critical. Um, for their futures, for the community's futures, for all of our futures. That's where I was headed with that, and that was a comma, by the right. way. <laughs> uh, it barely makes a dent because, to me, the need is so great. Yes. I can't quite understand for the life of me, if you bring these children in for a day, you get one day. Right. You've got to put a lot in that day. So that tells me you must have a stacked curriculum, am I right? We do. Um, well, we don't consider it stacked, so we do use what we call core, core curriculum or common curriculum um, based on uh, the public school system and other programs that we've looked at. We also have to remember that Wagner has no Boys or Girls Club or no YMCA, wow. no sports. or uh, They have a sports league um, for those that can afford the fee, and it's a good one. Um, it's a good league. However, we know a lot of those children can afford that fee. So we wanted to provide them with not only an educational component, but as John mentioned, a recreation and a fitness component as well. So we do a little bit of English, we do some math, we're teaching them financial literacy now, which is really exciting. We're setting up a mock store on site so they learn about purchasing products, what things cost, how to read labels, how to find value when you're purchasing things. Mm -hmm. So uh, th that's an important component of our program as well. We have art, we have special guest speakers, we take field trips when we can. So we're doing a, a lot more than just typical um, curriculum. Oklahoma, Lord love this state, it needs a helping hand. Yes. Oklahoma has ignored education. I will say this, you all can't, you're too nice. I'm not a nice person when it comes to education. But they've ignored education for way too long. It seems as though every time we get a nice bill passed designed to bolster education, somebody comes along and says, you know what, we can use that money over here. Consequently, it has not been a priority, yes. No. And education goes hungry, which takes me, notice this segue, takes me into the hungry child. We have children that go to bed in this, in this state and it's criminal, hungry, every single night. The only, the only food they get is a meal that's offered at the school they go to in the mornings, another one at midday. Now, 
I don't know how I don't I don't know how to tackle this. I'm not smart enough to figure it out. But I kn I do know something's going to have to change. The numbers that you're talking about here might be a good toehold, and I I'm all for that. But somebody's going to have to come along and say, you know what? Absolutely. We got to do more than we're doing. And and I think where you're leading to this, I I really like because. I really believe that this is going to be a template for other communities, Wagner size. We were told because we've had a lot of people with, with hearts both in the faith-based and in other community service oriented agencies that have tried to get a Boys and Girls Club for years in Wagner, but we've come to find out it's 1.2 to one and a half million dollars just to, to get that set up. And that's not going to happen in so many of our smaller communities. YMCA's we're not going to have. But what we've discovered in our community, there's the building that's there. And when you have a school board, a superintendent, you have the faith-based organizations coming together, and then DHS and other people are starting to come and look at the programs, we can start running out of that. Pooling of our resources together, we can start to address and serve that community. And it really starts with caring, and it starts with compassion and being there, and it's boots on the ground. You have to let that community, because there's just so many people that have let that community or that segment down. You know, about half of our children um, have lost a parent or a guardian to drugs in just the last three to four years. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the parent that's left or guardian that's left there is not at full capacity. And so we can kind of continue to turn a blind eye to this or we can come together and, and bring our faith base, bring our uh, other community service organizations, our cities, the school systems and pull the resources we have and start addressing those needs. John, is uh, Brighter Futures a 501c3 yes, nonprofit? It's a nonprofit. We have no staff positions at this point in time. We are a division of an existing uh, 501c Eternity Fraternity. Charlie and Lana Burns have been serving our community and the youth of our community for over 21 years, uh, close, I'm sorry, 22 plus years. Um, they have a wonderful program on Friday and Saturday nights, but it was geared for the 10 and older. Um, uh, so we've been, it's been a wonderful fit for us right now, but we will soon be breaking away from that because of just how quickly this has been growing. Uh, in less than six months, uh, it's, it's grown from uh, 20 students in the back of an office at the apartment complex to, like I said, the 50 plus students over there now and growing. And we've also started another 501c3 that's called Lincoln Community School Foundation. And that's going to really, we see this growing into more of a community service center. How does it, how are you funded? Um, it's been through uh, faith-based organizations, churches in town. For example, uh, there was meals for our students four days a week at the Central Elementary, a hot lunch. Our program could run the other day. We made sure at least five days a week they were getting a hot meal. We had no ability for transportation. Communities like Wagner do not have public transportation. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, United Methodist Church there in Wagner stepped up and provided us with a van. Mm -hmm. And they have given that to us for the ministry. Uh, other churches, Dr. Salix had a great idea about uh, rotating a schedule for hot lunches on those Mondays. And so we're starting to develop a, a calendar where we can provide the, the snacks, nutritional snacks through the day, but a nice hot lunch, which also gives the opportunity to face uh, 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 the community an opportunity to interact. And that's the other thing. Our school system has been sending out high school uh, kids from the Crisscross National Honor Society. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them just aren't aware of the great needs that we have here in, in our own country. Now, I don't want to I don't want to put you off on the end and say I'm not going to talk to you anymore, right. but I got to talk to this lady. And if, I may, um, if I may mention, too, I think we want to be especially appreciative of the partnership that we have with the Wagner Public Schools, allowing us to use it as their building. Mm -hmm. Um, providing us the support, providing us um, the snacks, the breakfast and the snacks. We had children come up to us and tell us that the hot meal they got that day was going to be the only thing hot they would probably eat all day. That breaks our hearts that that's occurring, but we know that's a reality. It's a statewide problem. It is, yes, and, I, and I think um, if you look at uh, some other state models and what they've been able to do, um, I always believed in benchmarking and sharing best practices when we were either looking at 
starting something new or refining something. And I think we can, we can look at some examples of how to do that differently. What is your PhD in? It's in leadership and higher education. So I'm actually a university professor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is the first time I've had this amount of um, exposure or a hands-on with uh, elementary curriculum and school-aged kids. I think in the trade we'd refer to that as boots on the ground. <laughs> Absolutely. Am I right? Yes, sir. I also wanted to mention something else. Um, John hadn't gotten to it yet, but uh, we're going to start community gardens there. We're going to teach them how to grow fruit mm -hmm. and vegetables. We're going to have them put their hands in the ground and own it. I saw a piece Take just the other day on one it. of the networks mm -hmm. uh, about a community that's doing that up in Connecticut. Yes. And it's, it's yes. very beneficial. Yes. So we can feed community and we can teach them about that as well as we're thinking um, as we grow a community garden and a p possibility of a farmer's market where the kids could sell the fruit or vegetables. and. We got about 30 seconds. This has the promise to me of growing. Uh, if, what I, if what I perceive here is accurate on my part, would you all stay in touch and absolutely. let us know yes, what comes from time to time? Absolutely. Thank you both. Thank you. So very Thank much you for so coming much. in. It's our pleasure. Thank That's you. all the time we have for this edition of Perspective. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.